All right, so real quick here, guys, so that we can get to the lab that we have to get to today. Okay, number one, very outside of the plant cell is cell wall. Okay, so number one is the cell wall. Okay, that's one mark. Second mark, its job is support, keep the shape of the cell, frame of the cell, anything that would imply it helps keep the shape of the cell. Okay. Questions on one. All right. Question number two. Okay. Number two is pointing at the nucleus. Okay. Must be spelled right. All right. I said that nucleus and nucleolus are the two that you have to spell right. Okay. Nucleus, and we are looking at stores DNA. All right. That is its primary job to store the DNA. Number three, number three is the rough ER. The rough ER's job is to transport protein. Okay, so number four then is the smooth ER. Okay, and I will accept any of the following functions. Okay, um, detoxifies poisons. Okay, uh, makes lipids. Um, breaks down complex carbohydrates. Okay, and hormones produces hormones. Okay, I'll accept any one of those. They do not have to have all four. Okay, as long as they have one, they get the mark for the function. That's fine. Detoxifies is fine. Okay. All right. So one mark for the name again, one mark for the function. So each of these is worth two marks. Okay. Number five is pointing at the water vacuole. Okay. Its job, support the shape of the cell. So if they have something about support, okay, or keep the shape of the cell, or if they have the words turgor pressure in there, that would also be fine. Number six is the mitochondria. Okay, burns sugar for energy. No. Okay. Glucose is even better than sugar because it's more specific. Okay, as long as they said that it burns glucose, yes. All right, um, number seven, okay, the green part of the plant cell is the chloroplast. And they only needed one word for the function of that, photosynthesis. All right, number nine, pointing at the empty space in the cell, which is known as the cytoplasm. Okay, and the cytoplasm's job, diffusion, okay, or something about facilitates transport, okay, something along those lines, okay. Right? The main reason your cell is full of fluid is so that diffusion can occur within the cell. Okay. All right, number 10, the inside layer. Okay, so you got the outer layer of the cell, you got the layer inside of that, that is the cell membrane. Okay, cell membrane controls these two things, exocytosis, endocytosis. No, because it doesn't it doesn't have a, a structural component to it. Caroline? No, I said we had to use specifically endocytosis and exocytosis. Okay. Number eleven, on your diagram this structure is orange, but on this on this diagram it's blue, but it's still the Golgi apparatus. Okay, and we can say processes or gets rid of wastes. Number 
not all wastes are toxic, so that's not specific enough. Or sorry, it's too specific. Okay, number 12 is the nucleolus. Again, this one must be spelt correctly. Okay, nucleolus copies DNA, okay, makes RNA or controls protein synthesis. I would accept any of those okay, as the function of that one. Question? What's that? No, that's what the nucleus does. All right. So uh, there were 11 questions because we didn't do number eight. So that makes the question out of 20 or the test out of 22. Please give them a mark out of 22. Okay. Let them see it and then put it in the bottom box here. And then when you get back to your desk, take out your microscopy lab handout that you got from the sub last week. Stores DNA. All right, now you're going to probably want to make a couple of notes here as we go along so that you enable yourself to get as many marks as possible when putting this lab report together, okay? The problem we're investigating here really is we're just going to look through the microscope and figure out exactly how it works, okay? What is the microscope made out of? Okay, yes, it's got some metal and some glass. I was actually looking for the names of kind of important parts. Lenses, right, okay? What are lenses? Lenses are structures that bend light. Okay? As light passes through curved pieces of glass, okay, its path is altered. When that happens, the image that you see is distorted, sometimes in a bad way, sometimes in a good way. In a microscope, because the lenses are you know, very finely uh, produced and, and polished and whatever else, you get a distorted image that is larger than the actual specimen that which you view. All right. Now, that gives you kind of an explanation as to how a microscope works. Okay. Light goes through lenses. The path of light is altered. Images get enlarged, distorted, whatever. Okay. But that's kind of a big part of your hypothesis. What I just said there. So it might be a good idea to watch the podcast when you're putting your hypothesis together. Okay. The and part of the hypothesis again is always as we as we always do a description of the experiment. We're going to look at tiny specimens under the microscope. Okay, then what are we going to see? Okay, the then part I'm looking for. What are the properties of the images that you look at going to be? All right. By properties I mean not specifically what is each one going to look like, but in general how will they look? Okay, bigger, smaller, right side up, upside down, backwards, mirror image. I don't know. Okay, that's for you to figure out. All right, you put that in the then part of your hypothesis, and then in the conclusion, you can tell me whether you were right or wrong. All right, follow me so far? Okay. So, manipulated responding controlled variables. Kind of tough to identify in this one, so I'm going to help you out with these ones. By that, I mean you probably want to write this down. Each time you look through the microscope, you'll be looking at a different specimen. Since each time you look through the microscope, you'll be looking at a different specimen, it will probably look different than the last time you looked through the microscope. That is, it may have a different appearance. Okay, controlled variables. Anything that remains the same while you are working with the microscope. All right, so... Are you using the same technique? Is it the same microscope? Okay, similar magnifications, okay, all of that kind of stuff. All right, so things to think about there for your design. So now we've talked about the design, we've talked about the hypothesis. Okay, procedure, pretty straightforward. You're going to go in there, and I think Miss Paulgard's class left the microscopes on the tables for us, so you won't even have to go find them. Okay, they'll already be there. Um, then you'll get the necessary slides. It says slides plural here, but in the lab it's going to be slide singular. You're only going to take one slide back to your table at a time. Okay? That way you don't have a whole bunch of them there, and there's no risk of a bunch of them getting swatted off onto the floor. All right, so just take one slide at a time. Done. C sheet, as always. Yes. The only time you have to write out the procedure is if you designed it yourself. Okay? If I gave you the procedure, you just write C sheet. Okay. Um, 
Make sure you also, when you're done, return them to the same dish from whence they came. All right? That means the one they came from. All right? If you took an amoeba, make sure it gets back in the amoeba box. All right? Not the paramecium box, but the amoeba box. Pretty simple. Okay? Um, while viewing the slides, you're going to make lab drawings of the letter E, paramecium, euglena, and, and amoeba. Now, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Okay? Technology is getting better, and there's smarter ways to make lab drawings than there used to be. So, while the format of the lab drawing that I've given you is still going to hold true, how you're going to do that is different, because I feel sorry for people who have my level of artistic ability. Okay? My level of artistic ability, people look like this. Okay? So I feel bad for you if you can't draw because I feel your pain. All right? Drawing an amoeba, yeah, that's you're getting a little outside of the realm of my ability. So you're going to take your phone, and when you have the specimen focused on the highest magnification you can get it on, with the exception of the letter E, you will put your phone against the microscope and take a picture through the microscope with your phone. Now, it's going to take a little bit of practice. The first couple of times, you're going to have to find the angle, and it takes a little bit, but eventually you'll see it. It's perfect. It's on there. Snap the picture. All right? Everybody with me there? Now, I'm going to show you in a minute how you're going to make your lab diagram, okay, using that picture. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy, okay? But it's going to follow that same format that I'll go through in a minute. Hmm? Well, there's other people in your group. They can email you the pictures. See, we got, we got a solution for every problem. Was that your question, too? Yeah. Okay, as long as someone in your group has a phone with a working camera, you should really take better care of your phone if your camera's broken. Okay, but, okay, as long as someone in your group has it, or each maybe each one of you wants to take their own pictures. But if you can't, the person in your group who takes the pictures sends them to everybody in the group. All right? Everybody with me there? Okay. So, that's going to be the big thing. All right, that's the big thing that we're looking for there are your, as your observations. Your observations are your lab dark diagrams. Okay? Now, the first thing you're going to look at is a wet mount of the letter E. All right? Now, a wet mount, okay, is done in this way. So you take uh, when we get in there, there'll be a box of microscope slides that are blank. There's nothing on them. So you'll take one of those, just a rectangular piece of glass. Okay? You will cut out from the newspaper that I have there, you will cut out from an article, so a small print lowercase letter E. So you will have a tiny little shred of paper that has a letter E on it. All right. Everyone with me so far? Okay. So you'll cut out this little tiny letter E. You're going to take that letter E and you're going to put that piece of paper that it's on right here on the slide. Make sure that it's right side up. Now, you're going to add a drop of water from an eyedropper to the letter E, which will promptly turn the E upside down on you. No big deal. Just pick it up and turn it so it's right side up and set it on the slide again. The water will kind of go everywhere. That's fine, too. Okay? As long as the letter E is on there and there's some water around it, okay, you may want to add a little bit more water if you need to. You're good. So you'll have this set up here. The letter E is wet. There's water on the slide. All right. So now, your letter E is sitting there. Now we're looking at it from the other way. Okay? This was top down. This is from the side. Then you will take a plastic cover slip. There's a small box of these things. They're just a little square of transparent plastic. And you're going to set it on the slide like this, holding this end. Then you'll drop it, and it will fall onto the letter E like so. Everybody with me? Now the purpose of the water becomes important. Water is a polar molecule. And it will help that thing to stick on there because of a couple of behaviors that water exhibits, which are part of your analysis, by the way. Okay? That will help to keep this, this uh, cover slip on. Now, you stick the slide under the microscope and have a look at the letter E. It's not terribly exciting. I realize you know what a letter E looks like. But you've never looked at a letter E under the microscope. Something weird is going to happen to the letter E. Make sure that your lab diagram reflects what the letter E looks like through the microscope. Okay? Now, that means you've got to make sure when you put the slide in the microscope, it's this way. The letter E is right side up because it's not going to look that way through the microscope. Spoiler alert, it's not going to look that way 
under the microscope. All right, draw it as it appears through the microscope. You don't need to magnify it any more than the first lens, the scanning power lens. Okay, it's the only one you're going to draw on that lens. Everybody good with that? Okay, so that's the first one. Take a picture of that one. Okay, the next one you're going to look at will be the amoeba. All right, and I want you to look at them in this order because they get progressively harder to find. The letter E is obviously the easiest one. It's the biggest. Okay, then you'll look at the amoeba. Find on, on scanning power. On scanning power, you'll probably just see purple, little tiny purple blobs. Kind of, you, you won't see much detail. You just see little purple spots. Okay, get one of those spots on the end of the pointer. Okay, remember when you look through the microscope, okay, you'll see that. You'll see a pointer in there. It's supposed to be there. It's a dark black thing that points toward the middle. Okay, it's not, you can't wipe it off. You can't clean it off. I've had people try. Okay, it's supposed to be there. So get one of those little purple dots. Move it so it's on the end of the pointer. The way you do that again is you use, okay, these little knobs right here to move the stage around, all right, until you've got that thing on the end of the pointer. Once you've got it there, move up to the low power lens. That's the yellow one. All right, so then you'll view it on the low power lens. Again, get it centered, focused, and then move up to high power. Get it as focused as you can. It'll probably take up almost the entire field of view on high power. That's okay. Take a picture of it. Got it? Same thing for the paramecium, then the euglena. The euglena will be the hardest one to find because it is by far the smallest. It generally has the same shape as the paramecium, and I'm going to show you in a minute what they all look like, okay, so you know what to look for. But it's way, way smaller. On the scanning power lens, the euglena will simply look like little slivers. Okay, so when you're looking through the scanning power lens, if you can see little slivers on the slide, you found them on the scanning power lens. Then move up to the next one, find them, focus them, move up to the high power. On high power, they're still going to be quite small. Okay? So you're looking at four things. Letter E, amoeba, paramecium, euglena. All right? To give you some idea what they look like. Sorry, Dom. The, the pointer? Yes, it's actually a wire. It's a wire that's down just below the... Uh, it's actually part of this lens here. Okay? When you take this off, you can actually see... Okay. Um, you can actually see in here, if you come take a look later, you can actually see the wire that's wrapped in. You come look after. All right? But that's where the pointer is. That's why you can't wipe it off. It's actually inside. Okay? Um, all right. So, give you an idea here. Okay? If you're estimating the size of an object, this is not one of the things you're looking at, but if you want to estimate the size, we talked about this before, okay? to estimate the size, longest dimension of what you're looking at and estimate how many would fit across. So I'd be looking at maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So if I was looking at this thing on the scanning power lens, okay, I would, or sorry, on the high power lens, I would go, all right, the field of view on my high power lens is 400 micrometers. Six can fit across. 400 over six, I've got the size of my specimen. Okay. And that's one of the things that goes on your lab drawing. Okay, so lab drawing. This is like, I had to save this one because this was my best plant cell hand drawn ever. And it's horrible. Okay, so um, when you're doing your lab drawing, a couple things to remember, and it's, this is on the sheet that you have, so you can kind of make notes on there. Your name and the date, okay, in the top right hand corner. Okay, the title, oddly enough, the, s the magnification you viewed it, and the size that you estimate using what we just talked about all go underneath the drawing. Nothing should appear above the drawing. And the drawing should take up most of the page. Make it as big as possible, okay, so that we can see as much detail as possible. So when you're taking the picture, you're going to blow it up as much as you can, okay? Your labels should all be to the same side of the sheet of paper. Okay? Labels shouldn't be going haphazardly everywhere. Shift your picture to one side so you've got lots of room on the other side for your labels. All right? If you've got two labels that would be too close to each other, if you drew them horizontally out, draw an angled line down like you see here, and then a straight line over, and you can put the label over there. People will still be able to follow what you're labeling. All right? But they should always end in a horizontal line. Okay, everybody with me? I know this seems really anal. And it is, because professors in university are. 
Okay? And if you don't draw it their way, they just give you a zero. Okay? It sucks. Trust me. Take it from someone who knows. Okay? They'll just give you a zero if you don't do it their way. So I'm trying to save you stress later. Okay? This is how you do it. All right? So that's how you do the labeling. Okay? Label the stuff you're sure about. You're not going to see ribosomes. You're not going to see probably ER or anything like that. You might if you're really good. Okay? But you're, you're, not, you're definitely not going to see ribosomes. Those weren't discovered until the electron microscope was invented. You're not seeing those with these. All right? Um, you're only going to see really big things for the most part within the cell. Okay? Everybody with me there? All right. Remember, these numbers, you have them in your notes, or you should already. Okay? On your scanning power lens, the magnification is 40x. The field of view, okay, that's the distance across what you can see, is 4,000 micrometers. Okay? On the low power lens, the magnification is 100x. Field of view is 1,600. And on the high power, okay, 400x, 400 micrometers across. All right, so important to remember those numbers. So, okay, if you're looking at something on the high power lens, okay, and it takes up the whole field of view, remember, this is the high power lens field of view right here. Okay, the field of view on the high power lens is the smallest because it magnifies the most. All right, when you zoom in on something, you see less of the surroundings and more detail on the object. Okay, on the low power lens, you see more detail, but less area. Scanning power, okay, which is the red circle, obviously you see a lot, but everything you see is quite small. Okay? Everybody good with that? Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, this should already be in your notes, Cam. Okay. I can't stay on this too long. I gotta get other stuff done here. Alex? Yes? Right, only draw one, and only give me the measurement on the one you draw. So that's a good question, because probably in a few cases on these, you might have two paramecium, or two euglenas, or five euglenas on the same that you're looking at when you take your picture. Draw the best one, okay? Pick the best one. You're actually, you're not going to draw it, because I'm going to show you how here in a minute. Okay, but you take your best one, and whatever one you take is the one you estimate the size of. Tom. different one then. Pick different ones. Then move the slide around and find another. There's lots on these slides, trust me. Okay? Like if you move the thing a little bit, you'll see five more. Alright? Just pick one that's good and separate all by itself. Four thousand micrometers is four millimeters, about half a centimeter. No, this is micro. That's mu. This is the Greek letter M, mu. Okay? Mu. Micrometers. Mu stands for micro. We can't use little m because we already used it for millimeters, right? Okay, so we got to use the Greek spam. All right, so, and that was for the letter E. I already talked about that. Okay, these are the things you're going to be looking at under the microscope, okay? Um, this is the amoeba here in the bottom left, all right? Now, not all amoebas have this shape. Amoebas are purple, pink blobs. They all have a different shape. All right? They're like a gelatinous mass that just moves around. Okay? They, they put out a little, uh, it's called a pseudopod, okay? that, an extension like this, and then the rest of them sloshes into it, and that's how they move. All right? So it's, can they, they're not all going to have this shape, but they're generally a purple blob. Okay? The paramecium, they look like this. They have a very kind of an hourglass shape almost, okay, or an oblong shape. Um, and you'll typically see a nucleus in there. Ours are, are stained differently than this. Ours are going to appear purple, pink, and there might actually be a few brown ones, okay? Um, but they're usually going to be purple and pink under the microscope, but they'll generally have this shape. Your euglena, okay, is this one here on the top left. It's the smallest of the ones. You won't see it at this magnification for sure, all right? It'll look a lot smaller. The difference between the paramecium and the euglena is this. First off, size, but secondly, you can barely see it here, but you actually see it up here on the top. If I can just get Juliana to turn the front light off there. Okay, you see these things right here? It's ca almost kind of blurry, but they look like hair. They're almost hair. They're called cilia, and they're like little hairs, and they wave around really quickly, and that's how the paramecium moves. All right, the euglena doesn't have those. It has a single long flagellum. 
and we showed you that on the on the animal cell diagram the other day. All right, so that's kind of their big difference. Also, the euglena tends to come to a point more where the flagellum is, whereas the paramecium tends to be rounded on both ends. All right, so those are the general shapes that you're looking for when you look at the slides. Okay, give you some idea. Now, for your lab drawings, all right, to give you an idea of how you can do this easily, okay, um, on your computer without actually having to do any drawing, and that makes it, of course, easier to put into your Google Docs, which is how you submit. Okay, I'm going to show you one that I made in about five minutes this morning. Okay, um, so. No, oh, but it won't be on that one. Okay, just give me a sec here, guys, and I'll pull that up. All right, so uh, lab drawing, lab diagram for paramecium. Okay, so if I click on that, okay, this is how it turned out for me. Okay, I just took a picture of a paramecium through the microscope, and then I used Paint, Microsoft Paint. It's a simple program, it's free with Microsoft, I'm assuming Mac has an, an equivalent. Okay, and I simply cut that paramecium out of the picture and pasted it in here, okay, or into another paint. Uh, program and I put my name at the top. I labeled it in Paint, okay, and I put Paramecium 400x and 180 underneath. Okay, it was super easy to do. Okay, and I'm going to show you quickly how I did that. So first thing I did is I went into uh, Paint or whatever program you're going to use. Uh, where's Paint? Okay, my other computer has paint. What's going on here? And just to make me look bad, that's what it does. All right. I did search paint and it didn't come up. Okay. Um, okay. Let me show it to you guys. Uh, you know what? Let me get. We'll go over and do the lab, and then we'll. Uh, I'll show you how to. Okay. So to do your lab drawings, okay, you take your picture that you've sent yourself from the um, from the lab, and you are going to hit select here, and you're going to go down to free form selection, and essentially you'll just outline your paramecium, amoeba, whatever it was. Okay. By doing this, it will essentially cut it out of, of the uh, rest of the picture. All right. So now you're just going to right-click on that, and you're going to copy it. And then you're going to open up a new file. Okay. You don't have to save that one. And then you'll simply click Paste. Okay. Now you've got this diagram in here, and you can manipulate it however you want. First thing I want to do is rotate it a little bit okay, so that I have it more straight up and down. Okay, and then I'm going to blow it up a bit, okay, make it a little bit bigger. All right, obviously I, the one I took here is not a very high resolution, so it's not showing up very well in here. Okay, but this is just for illustration purposes. So we've got our diagram, we've got it kind of blown up, and now we can start adding uh, lines and things like that to it. Okay, so um, we'll put in some labels here, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, so once you've got paint kind of enlarged and maximized here on your screen. You click up here on this line, okay, and the line will allow you to draw in lines. Okay, so I put one here and run it out to the side. All right, so we'll put lines from essentially anything we think with it we can uh, that we can label. Okay, so another line here, and again we want to make them as horizontal as possible. And we'll just make three here for sake of doing this quickly. All right now that I've got that, I'm going to want to put labels on those. So I click on my letter button here. Click on that. It gives me a box in which I can type, and I can put on here cilia. And I put another one down here and say nucleus. And another one down here. 
and I can say that this is the cytoplasm. All right, once I've got that done, I'm just going to save that. I'm going to save it. Okay, save it as a JPEG. That's usually the easiest way. All right, I'm just going to put it in my uh, pictures here. All right, so now that I've got that, now I can go into my Google Docs. Okay, as I've got an untitled document here that I'll make as my lab drawing in just a second. All right, first thing I want to do is format it the way it's supposed to be formatted with my name. Okay, and the date. Okay, now that I've got that, okay, I'll uh, just return here, get myself a couple of returns, probably center this, and then return a few times, and then go back up to here, and the first thing I want to do is insert that image I just made. All right, so it says choose an image to upload, so I'm just going to go into my pictures here, okay, and find that file I just made. There it is. And it inserts it into my document for me. All right, so now I've got, okay, down below where I can write in, this is a paramecium, okay, title of the drawing, and I looked at that under high power, so the magnification is 400x, and I estimated the size to be approximately 180 micrometers. And my lab drawing's done. It's as simple as that. All right, so that's how you'll be doing those so that they will be electronically submitted along with the rest of your uh, lab report. Now, in regards to the rest of the lab report, okay, we didn't get a chance to talk much about the uh, analysis here. Okay, you have these analysis questions here to answer using what you saw under the microscope. Explain what you think happened to enlarge the specimens. What I'm looking for there is what happened to the light when it went through the lenses. Okay, number two, describe and explain the steps you took to find and focus your spec your paramecium. Okay, so essentially tell me how you did that, the steps, proper use of the microscope. Thirdly, why did we add water to the wet mount? We talked about that at the beginning. Okay, has something to do with the way water behaves and what kind of molecule water is. Okay, all that kind of stuff. Conclusion, restate your hypothesis, explain why you accept or reject it, and then your sources of error for the lab. All right, so those are the things that are going to need to be included, uh, and this is going to be uh, due probably uh, next week sometime. I am thinking probably uh, April the 1st, and that's not an April Fool's joke. April 1st, guys.